well, me and George had a little disagreement there, but we're friends now, so it's all good. Welcome <laughs> oh, back, sorry, everyone, right? to Sent Into Horror Hell. What is this, the 18th episode? I think it's the 18th episode of last time, I believe. I am yeah. Skid Gore. This is cool. the one, the only. And we are back with the Sent Into Horror Hell. Thank you all for watching. We got a special episode for you guys tonight. All about killer dolls and, yeah, you, Dollar dolls things. and demonic toys and shit. <laughs> So, it's going to be a blast, guys. Stick around, guys. So, let's do it. Cheers. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, 5, Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Sin No Hill. Ah! We always have our favorite section, which is recent watches, and I'm sure it's one of your favorites too. Yeah. So it's everything, but like, just a movie, whether it's you know newer or old school, whatever. we'll probably cover it here. Whatever tickles our funny bone, apparently. Um, but <coughs> my first one is Richard Boone in the Immortal. Fun movie. Yes, I I must said I spit on your grave. I bury the living. Wrong movie. <laughs> From uh, 57. Even though I thought we thought it was 58. I yeah, I did too. Bullshit. I guess we were a year off. I think that's bullshit. This is a great film. A really good example of early psychological oh, horror. Yeah. Uh, Richard Boone's character, he has like this unique ability to like see things before they happen and the predict dead, things. The dead zone kind of deal. Yeah, way before the dead zone yeah. too. <clears throat> but actually, I think Stephen King was even inspired by this movie. I, I wouldn't doubt, there's, I wouldn't he had, doubt a, it he had a book called Dance Macabre. Mm -hmm. And I think he talked about this film in there, so that would make very good sense. Yeah. Um, amazing psychological mind trip, man. Uh, Richard Boone's character, he's so sympathetic, he's a nice guy. He's a uh, owner of this craft department store, and basically he's got to take over this huge cemetery just for the town, you know, it's, it's good morals or whatever mm -hmm. back then. It's like you can't refuse a job because it's in the family. Yep. So he has to take this job, and he's not very thrilled about it, <clears throat> as you can imagine. I don't really think he's too keen on working in a graveyard. Yeah, but I would. Well, there's I this. Don't know. Well, I would too. There's this, um, you know, this caretaker named um, Andy McKee, and uh, he's kind of this crusty old man that you don't really think he's uh, got it all up here yet, you know, and. Kind of a sinister fellow, but he comes across as being like a warm-hearted guy, you know. But it just gets kind of, it just gets kind of weird, man. Like uh, there's this huge map on the wall that shows where all the plots are, where people mm. that are planning on, di well, not planning on dying, but yeah. when they die, they're planning to die. And then the black yeah. pins are the ones where people are already deceased yeah. and whatnot. So this uh, Pat Boone's character, what the hell is Richard this guy's Boone. name? Name. Richard Pat <laughs> Boone. <laughs> wow. Another one's going to uh, Bob. Robert Kraft. I'm sorry. Yeah, Bob is his name. And he automatically just uh, takes, kind of by random, sticks a black pin in the map when he wanted to actually put a white one because they bought cemetery plots. Turns out the couple that he saw earlier in the day ends up dead on their wedding day, I believe. It was their wedding yeah. day. Yeah, and they're found so. dead in their car. And he's just kind of like, Whoa! Yeah, what's going on here? You know, and yeah. he had just like this this power since he was a child of just all these weird nightmares and visions and stuff, and it just gets real. It's he spirals into into total darkness, wow. man, and it's just a really good portrayal. I really don't think this movie gets enough credit, and I really think uh, more people should see this film. That's why I thought it would be appropriate to do it. I always used to think that was a zombie film when I saw it. Yeah, absolutely, and it kind of <laughs> it. And when the graves are dug up and stuff, yeah. you kind of can get that vision of like, whoa, the dead are coming back to life. Yeah. But really, it's, well, that would be giving it away. I can't say who's doing yeah. it precisely. But yeah, check it out. I Bury a Living from 1957 with Richard <laughs> Boone, not Pat Boone. Cool, what you got? All right, I got a, an interesting new slasher film from Brain Damage called Scathing. Awesome movie. Um... This, of course, was kind of a, not a blind buy per se, but I picked it out because it had a kind of a cool concept, you know, kind of a, you know, killer kind of deal. But the thing that got to me 
and why I got it was because of the special effects team in this movie. Um, Chris Polidoro and Marcus Cook, of course, both did uh, special effects for the American Guinea Pig movie, Bokeh of Guts and Gore. Um, Absolutely. So, I mean, when you see one, it's cool. When you <clears> see both of them, you know something pretty cool is going to come out of it. some good gooey kills in that one. Um, basically, it starts off like every slasher movie. The acting is terrible because it is brain damage. We all should know I this I was by giving now. you shit about the acting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just like, bear with it, bear with it. There's a payoff. I'm like, all right. Give fine. it a chance, yeah. All right, cool. So the acting is pretty terrible. Um, how, how a girl can speak to her boyfriend through a window that's closed and he's down two stories and they can understand what each other are saying. Does that make sense? Hell no. Of course. Um, but they end up at this, going to this old abandoned property and... Um, you know, he's trying to get laid, you know, the typical teen. Oh, and, uh, getting laid in a slasher is essential. And basically, they wake up and the car dies, and at that point, uh, the killer comes out. And uh, they, he's got that cool mask. And I always, yeah, he's got a welder's mask on. I'm not, you know, I can't really give it away. If you see the cover, you'll know. And uh, the friends come along and try to help him out with the dead car. And needless to say, the guy who looks like John Tardy from Obituary, <laughs> very fat guy. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of what I thought was absolutely hilarious because I just wanted, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's basically just a, it's a good slasher film. It's a really yeah. creepy story. They did have some things in there that, you know, the props, again, Marcus Cook and Chris put the, the props together. Dead baby part. Had I've the, never seen that in a horror a, film before. Had a, he, was, he was pretty much going to devour a baby. That was brutal. So, like, that just and, came uh, out of nowhere, too. Like, after he's done butchering her boyfriend and her friends and stuff. And this this, <gasps> this movie, if you, when you watch it and you're a fan of horror, you're going to get, like, I think three or four different movies that are going to come to mind oh, yeah. as far as... Um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I Influences. S- yeah, um, I definitely saw a lot of Cujo and, uh, except high not t- a dog. Yeah. <laughs> high tension, I, 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 definitely. He stalks them and things like that outside the car. It's very creepy. Texas Chainsaw Massacre style um, stuff, too. High tension, if you like that movie. And a lot of people do dug that. So this yeah. has got that kind of element. So, it was like I said, one. if you can get past the acting and things like that, you'll really enjoy scathing. This came out 2016. Brand um, spanking new. So definitely, and Bob Glazer's in it. Bob Glazer, <laughs> from Sleaze Box. Can't absolutely. forget that. We, pers- comes, we support Bob Glazer here at the Sentinel Horror. And Lives. he comes out of nowhere, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> I was totally dumbstruck when, because Ghouls would let, let me watch it the first time, and he's like, "Dude, you're gonna start laughing when you see that." I'm like, "What? What's gonna happen?" I thought you'd like see, you know, whatever. All of a sudden, Bob Glazer just comes out of talking nowhere. Talking about toilets. Talking about toilets. His leaky toilet. It yeah. was great. So there you go. <laughs> Scathing for me from Ghoul and. Uh, I buried the living by, with Richard, but not by Richard. <laughs> Anyways, Grant, who actually who did direct this one? Albert Band. Wow, wonder if he's related to Richard Band. Anyway, those are Charles uh, Band. recent watches. Charles Band. I'm all over the place on this one. <laughs> These are recent, those are recent watches, watches, guys. Hope you guys had some fun doing that. But we'll come back and we're gonna show you some killer dolls. Cheers. We're going for a ride. Get out of my way. Jessica, let's play with... Hey guys, welcome back to Descent into Horror Hell. We are going to start our... Doll episode. And, uh... Skid Gore over here is going to lay off that amaretto. Apparently <laughs> it's starting to take a toll. We apologize for... Sorry guys. Pat Boone. Yeah, that was... Wow, man. Nothing against Pat Boone, but that was funny. That was pretty ridiculous. That was pretty bad. Let's continue But anyways, i um, going to start off... We're gonna, we're, now, obviously, with doll movies, there's a lot of sequels and prequels and all that stuff. So I think, you know, we're going to not... We don't usually have as many as normal... Getting the puppets drunk. Um, don't have as much as we, you know, usually do, but... That's only because dolls, in a sense, movies are hit and miss. Um, if you know a doll movie, you know it. Um, a lot of the time, movies with dolls are not specifically centered around the dolls. It just may be a small part of it, yeah. maybe a very large part of it. That's all it's about. Like in this case, the very first movie I got, of course, is 2007, Dead Silence. 
Uh, what is this? James Wan, of course, from Saw. Totally different movie. This movie is actually creepy as shit. Mm-hmm. Um, beware the stare of Mary Shaw, that whole thing. She had um, children only dolls and if you see her in your dreams. One of my girlfriends can recite yeah. that whole damn movie. <laughs> and uh you know, this movie was just if you hated dolls, it's like if you hate clowns, you don't watch clown house. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and this movie, you know, made it to theaters and I really wish more movies like this made it because these this this movie was great because <clears throat> Mary Shaw, you know, if everybody knows the story, I'm sure she got murdered by the villagers for, oh, uh, what the hell was it, for kidnapping children or something like that, and putting them in these dolls that she creates. And I just, the one, there's two scenes in this movie that gave me chills. One of them is when they're in the attic and that doll's sitting in the corner and it's just rocking on that chair. Yep. And they're walking up to it and all of a sudden the music stops and oh. he's just right next to him. Totally. The second time is when they find the big wall of dolls, and it just silence, and you're just you just hear these small sound effects. Very atmospheric, very well made movie. He hit it right on the head with the atmosphere part. I mean, that so movie creepy. definitely brings to mind Mario Bava with the oh, camera man. and the you know the lighting. Definitely the red lighting, like oh, when yeah. the guys in the hotel and there's like light. Yep. That's total Mario Bava style. Man. Oh yeah. That's what I got from that too. It's a great film. So one of my favorites, definitely as far as puppet movies go. So uh, that one's a first round knockout. What I got? Well, I got several here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Puppet Master series, man. This Lots is really cool. God, there's like nine movies on here. Yeah, over twelve hours of Puppet Master. Does it have that X or Evil Access? Access of Evil, yep. yeah. Puppet Access Master Evil. Nine. Yep. They're all on here. I've only seen one, two, three, and. Curse of Puppet Master 6, so I gotta check out a couple other ones, but really cool series, definitely Full Moon, uh, pretty much put them on the map along with like, you know, subspecies and yeah. stuff like that, Yeah. really good, uh, really cool series, really out there too, uh, the first one is probably my personal oh, yeah. favorite, uh, that, was that one's question. actually pretty gory, I mean, I was actually, yeah. when I first saw that at a young age, I thought that was a pretty gory movie. Very, you know, considering they're small, they're, there's yeah. just something about them, man, they're just... Yeah, they're rolling. iconic too, I mean, especially Blade, the guy in the yep. cover there, uh, Pinhead, or, uh... Oh, the drill head, I can't... The, yeah, he's not on the cover. It is the oversized man with the small head. <laughs> I can't yeah. remember the names of them. There's but. a huge, great box set of Pumpkinhead movies that have, like, behind-the-scene features and stuff. I would highly recommend that. I don't have that, but I just have this little piece of shit one. But you get all the movies on. Did you like, say pumpkin head? Puppet. Did I say you pumpkin? Said pumpkin See, head. it's avocado again. Whatever the hell, avocado. Whatever the hell I was drinking. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Puppet yeah. Master is a great series. Yes. Check it out. Go what you got. On that line. Now, anybody know Silent Night, Deadly Night? Um, the only one the reason put in there is Part 5. Came out in 91, I believe. Um, the Toy Maker. Um, I've seen I've seen parts of this. I've never actually seen the full movie, but it's basically Santa Claus making toys. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, that's all I really remember from it. Um, but you know, this goes along the series of the Silent Night, Deadly Night. They took off after the '84, you know, '84 movie. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, and of course that's a classic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you like if, if, you, if you like the Silent Night, Deadly Night type movies, I mean that. You know, I've never seen that one you just talked about. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, I gotta watch it again. It's been it's been quite a while. I've only seen, seen the it. first one, obviously, and the second one, yeah. Garbage Day, Garbage which is still Day. my favorite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a real classic here, man. Uh, Karen Black Essential. Trilogy of Terror, man. Plays this, all three characters. <laughs> absolutely, man. And she's a she she she. They did an interview with her, and kind of was like time she did like House of Thousand Corpses. She's like, I really don't like doing horror roles. I just like doing real role because she really was a character actress. Actor. She, yeah, she did a lot actress, of stuff. Yeah. But uh, oh man, her fairy into horror definitely for a Trilogy of Terror was great. I mean, the the course the story will most elaborate on since this is a doll killer toy episode, whatever. Uh, it was the Tiki, I think it's called the Tiki, Tiki Man. Tiki Man. Tiki Man? I yeah. get that, right? Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just like this creepy fucking little motherfucking fucker. It's like a voodoo doll. On here. Yeah, voodoo doll, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, he's totally he's, obsessed with taking her out and like stabbing her yeah. with his knife and she throws him in the oven and bakes him <laughs> and he's yeah. just like, 
<laughs> it, and he's, he's a so very cool. he's a very iconic character. Considering he is man. I mean, when you see him and you, if you like horror things like that, you're yeah. kind of going, oh, trilogy. And I remember somebody told me about that, and I forgot the name of the movie at the time. But it, it, yeah, it's one of those movies. It's a that great it's movie. A, it's a great character. It's a great set of movies. There's a second one, third one, I believe too. I don't think there's a third. I know there's a second there's one. A, I know there's a second one. I'm, I'll get to that one later. But there. yeah, that's my trilogy of terror. That's a classic, man. Seventies classic. Uh, Dan Curtis of uh, you know Dracula. Dark Shadows fame, Dracula. stuff like that. Uh, Dan Curtis Dracula with yeah. Donald Pl- uh, Jack Pleasance. <laughs> Not Donald. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah, this is a great movie. Check it out. Go right. What you got? We're going back to the '80s in Child's Play. There's really not much we're gonna say about this one. I mean, oh. serial killer basically gets killed, and he takes an innocent doll, and he basically just puts himself into the doll and goes out on revenge killings. Um, Child's Play is classic. This movie did creep me out. I even got it too. I just like Ghoul's ah! cover better. Sorry, puppets. Ghoul's here. cover's better. This is cool because it's you know the. 20th birthday anniversary, but I love his cover. That's why we chose this that. This is the classic one, of course. Yeah. And, you know, they spawned a lot of these other movies. I think yeah. Seed of Chucky, Bride of Chucky. Bread, um, bread now they got a new one coming out, which I'm kind of skeptical on. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, definitely Child's Play. If you guys like, you know... I like that Curse of Chucky too. That that, re- that last one. That Cedar, was, Cedar they Cedar tried Chucky to they one. tried to make him like more scary, and less comedic. Cause you know they made him really campy and see the Chucky, right? Yeah. Chucky, whatever. Yeah. But that one they actually tried to bring him back to you Evil know the original, which shit, is yeah. cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of a hit or miss with this series. I personally like the series. They're just fun to watch. You know. They're a good time. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, I'm going to throw you in the fire. <laughs> you fucking bitch, you stupid slut. I'll teach you to fuck with me. <laughs> I got a feeling you'll probably see that later. <laughs> Good chance. I have The Conjuring, which is obviously uh, a ghost movie. Everyone under the sun has seen this, which mm-hmm. is great. But there is a creepy little doll in this movie called Annabelle. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much, that's it, man. She's creepy as hell. And we're going to go on that, Annabelle, because that, of course, spawned this movie. Um, the doll is creepy as shit, don't get me wrong. Yeah, the, um, the story was cool, but I think because of the time it came out in, it's a CG shit fest. And it disappeared up its own ass in religion, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and it's <laughs> and it's sad, because this The movie, opening is awesome with the Manson yes, family murders. Yes. That's cool. This could have been a really well-made film, a really good doll film, stuff like the 70s, 80s, yeah. 90s even. But Computer Man, they take over these fucking movies, and they just make them so... Like, so ridiculous, like, to a point. Now, the movie we're not going to talk about, but I can say is Robert. That's the other one that came out recently, and that's kind of the male version of Annabelle, (laughs) another possessed doll. I mean, they got in a big kick on this. Hollywood or whatever is on these big kicks of trying to make, you know, when something hits, zombies, you know, dolls, clowns, paranormal. paranormal. I mean, they always hit these niches. And they just they just go off on them, and a lot of the times they're <laughs> they're what you expect. But now, uh, yeah, uh, right folks, have you ever watched a movie where you actually feel like you have to take a shower after physically watching? Like, We've had a few of those. Whether it's like AU or Necromantic or something, yeah, I can see that. This one definitely is no exception to. This is called the Sinful Dwarf, <laughs> and I'm sure you're out there laughing right now. You know exactly what I mean. This movie makes you want to take a shower. It's so sleazy, disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I love it. Uh, Orloff is the dwarf. He's, he's an awesome movie. He's an awesome actor in this movie. But this movie does have a lot of, like, you know, toys and dolls and stuff. Mm-hmm. He, um, there's a lot of drug pelifin- pelif- pelif- paraphernalia. Yes. Thank you, Ghoul. Can't say that. But, yeah, th- you know, this is a great movie. Um, this is the one to get. This is the X-rated version. The there's, XXX rated. Yeah, version. yeah. This is the one to get. It's also on Blu-ray, too. More people should see this. Dwarf exploitation is kind of... It's like nonsense. It's kind of like... Yeah, yeah. It's like not really talked about too much, yeah. you know? But uh, mix this with killer to- with uh, you know toys, Orlaf's toys, and his weird mother who plays the piano and thinks that she's like this actress when she's like this old woman that can't sing. Wasn't there like a sinful <laughs> dwarf versus something, though? What? There was, a, there was a film that came out a few years ago. It was like sinful dwarf versus something or somebody. Oh, you might be right on it. And know. it was pretty... It was it got pretty low ratings, which... The sinful dwarf, though. That's the one to check out. 
Nineteen. What is this? Seventy. <clears throat> oh, they got a classic. Ghoul's got a classic. Seventy-three or seventy-seven. We've seen this. Whatever. Many Tourist times. trap. Of course, Chuck Connors or the Rifleman. Absolutely. <laughs> um. And this this works on all levels of dolls because of course he's you know he's got these doll parts that are in this and he's recreating life size dolls really good movie really creepy and it's that got that seventies vibe to it there's really actually good gore in this um, I don't remember there being much gore but the, well, the when he killed him and stuff like that like yeah. that on the table I mean there was some it wasn't like over the top. Just the whole atmosphere um, of the mannequins as that was creepy as yeah. well. Yeah, so Tourist Trap definitely is one to check out if you haven't yet. Um, and Chuck Connors is a is definitely up there with uh, Bill Mosley and like yeah. crazy motherfuckers. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely feel that in that one. Uh, this is a modern one called The Devil's Doll. Now, this is a real treat too. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but it, you know it has more of a voodoo rights type thing. And uh, kind of just makes people just go nuts, really. Just go on a muck and just, you know, kill people really brutally. Mm -hmm. This was a really good treat. I highly recommend this. Definitely anything from Stream Factory, you know, is going to be pretty top-notch. Mm -hmm. IFC Midnight. We watched this one. This one was awesome. Yeah. Awesome film. All right. One we got is uh, Baby Blues. That one I've never a seen. subtitled movie. It's a Japanese film. Um, basically, these... These parents kind of move into this house, and um, the deliver she's she's pregnant with two boys, and the pregnancy goes wrong, and they lose one. And in this house, they find this doll, and they kind of get a little attached, <laughs> and kind of replace the child with this doll. And the doll kind of has a dark, sinister past to the house. And like most, it, it kind of turns into a paranormal type movie, but at the same time, it's just, you know, it kind of reminds me of The Ring. It reminds me of that kind of doll. You know, with the dark black circles around its eyes, just porcelain face, like really like that. And uh, so that's kind of where the doll comes in, but it's a, it's, it, it's a subtitled film, so you kind of got to be in the mood for it. Can't just sit there at like, you know, two in the morning when you've been drinking and try to watch a subtitled movie. It doesn't work. True story. <laughs> <laughs> so I still do it though. I still do it. I try. Um, this is a killer doll slash killer toys um, episode, so I figured this one would be appropriate. About a killer video game, Brain Scan, uh, with Edward Furlong and Franklin Jella Dracula. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this was a real. I mean, this was always one of my favorites. Uh, this is definitely a, a a great, great film about a killer. Uh, well, this this loner Edward Furlong plays this loner he, who's just kind of looking for a girlfriend, you know? Aren't, aren't we all? <laughs> and um, it just kind of gets out of control because he's obsessed with this video game. And um, yeah, the guy on the cover, I forget what the hell his name is, but he's a creepy motherfucker. He's kind of always a cre I, that was one of the covers I always saw yeah, as a kid. Yeah, I the, remember that somewhere. Up I had there. the VHS of it. Yes. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but um, and the VHS covers hell a lot better than this in my opinion. But yeah, this was a great film. Um, you don't really... It's kind of psychological in a way because you don't know whether Edward Furlong is like actually doing these deeds or it's all in his you know head or it's just all in the video game. It's a combination of like all three pretty much. And um, it's got a really good story to it. Check yeah. it out. Brain Scam. Nice. One of my favorites. Very underrated film. Now this one is kind of an interesting one. Um, 2003's Love Object, <laughs> and this deals with dolls because of the, the sex doll, <laughs> the sex doll that he has. <laughs> sex doll. Um, you know, he makes a lifeline, a life like silicone doll. Just you know, doesn't do enough for him. I that guess. one's fucked up, man. Good movie though. Very, yeah, very good. less talked about. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of like the male version of May, honestly. Yeah. This guy's, you know, just body, obsessed. Obsessed with body parts and stuff. Yeah. And when the doll doesn't do it, move on to the real thing. <laughs> right on. Yeah, Definitely that, love that, it. That one was good. Check that check Love Object out, guys. Write it on your notepad and I know you guys got out, right? This is a true classic right here, right here. Right. It's called uh Poltergeist. You might have seen it, yeah. The I'm remake? Sure. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck the remake and a wet bag of shit. But yeah, this is the real McCoy here. <clears throat> this is a great film. 
Oh, the scene, of course, we'll talk about, of course, is that demonic killer clown. Oh, my mm. God, that thing was creepy. That definitely put some color in your shorts when As you were a, a fucking fuck, kid. Yeah, yeah oh, it yeah. made you fear clowns and uh, um, tornadoes, too. There's, like, a tornado. Yeah. So you like... get killer dolls and tornadoes <laughs> in one movie. And a really pissed off spirit. Yes. But this is a great movie. Uh, Craig T. Nelson is amazing in this film. Coach. Coach, absolutely. <laughs> Jerry Goldsmith score. Amazing. And of course, the second one was my, great. My favorite scene in this movie is when they're watching the ball game and Mr. Rogers comes on. <laughs> yes. and they're all pissed off. The, the Who the hell's this guy? The second one was actually pretty good. Oh man, and, the second one was a fucking and, great. And then um, it it sucks. That the third one wasn't quite the third, made. Third we don't know why. Third one, I mean, was good too. Yeah, I mean, obviously the little girl. Yeah. Everyone knows she died, unfortunately. Really, really, really mysterious circumstances too. I, I still don't really. Yeah, understand somebody that. actually, I remember somebody. I read something where they they blame the movie like it oh, actually of course. caused her death. Yeah, it's always the movie's fault. Yeah. Right? And also, we'll say Toby Hooper directed this movie, not Steven Spielberg. Yes. There's been some debate on this over the years. He did work on it, though, didn't he? Did, he? Yeah, absolutely. Steven Spielberg yeah. did a lot for this movie, but Toby Hooper never got the credit for this fucking movie, and it pisses me off, because everyone thinks Toby Hooper old Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yep. This is a fucking masterpiece by him as well. Sorry for the rant, but yeah. <laughs> and, of course, you have the Zilda. The hell is her name, that little midget? Zilda. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot her name, man, but, you she know, was on, yeah, she's, she's so cool. Go out to the light! <laughs> yeah. That's All right, guys. We're going to go kill some. actually. We're going to have our beer little boys here kill somebody. I think so, needs a beer break. So does this guy, I think. So, guys, join us back while we finish up these movies. We get down to Planets Collide. We're going to talk some more metal with you. Absolutely. So definitely stay tuned, guys. Cheers. Cheers. We're back. What's going on, horror fans? Welcome back to the Centaur Hell. Let's keep this shit rolling. Demonic toys and uh, killer dolls, all a bunch of stuff. Anything puppets or one I got now, and I'm a dumbass and I totally forgot it at home. I really would have had it here because it's a great film. Yeah. So imagine it in my. Throw it on here. Right, it'll be right here. Pin for 1988. It's a Canadian horror film about a. It's a really good psychological horror thriller. Uh, Terry O'Quinn of Stepfather fame is in it. Um, just an amazing treat. I watched it for the first time last night, and it just totally knocked my socks off. It was amazing. A really good atmosphere. Uh, this anatomy dummy is creepy. This, I don't want to give too much away because I don't want to give the ending away. But this, this, you know, this dude hears voices, and is it him doing it? Is it the dummy doing it? You yeah. know, it's, it's kind of like a psychological. <laughs> He's in inside the dolls head, yeah. inside your head, kind of. Yeah, deal. but. Pin is great. Check it out. I would have had it here, but I'm done. And now that we're done with Pin, we're going to move on to another one we forgot. Pen. Yeah, that was my the fault, too. Per, the pen. The pen. You mean pit? The pit. <laughs> the pit pen? <laughs> the pit, the pen. I have my moments, too. The pit. The pit. Yes. Um, 80, From 80-something. 80 80, I don't know. Yeah, it's 85 remember. or something. I think it was like 81. That old? Yeah, mm -hmm. could have been. But basically, this kid kind of... <laughs> has this crush on this babysitter. I'd say. <laughs> and he's still an adolescent of sorts, and he has this Discovering teddy this bear that he <laughs> kind of coddles, I guess. And what he ends up finding, he finds this pit in the middle of the woods, and it's full of these... <laughs> <laughs> it's all Ewok fucking <laughs> motherfuckers. Yeah, they look, they look like, like Ewoks. Or but Chud came out. Yeah. <laughs> and basically that he goes down there and he feeds them and things like that, but this bear kind of talks to him and he tells him to... You know, kill off the boyfriend and, you know, off all these people and things yep. like that. And that one it, it's it's fun. It's a fun movie. And it's one of those where you enjoy it thoroughly throughout the entire movie. It's yeah. not like you get to a point where it's boring. No, that was good. Um, that was it's a, a good, good movie. One. So we watched, that definitely. One, we watched that one recently. That was a good one. So you have the pin and the pit. <laughs> Just imagine them down the screen. You know, check We're going to put them right here for you so you see the covers and you know what to look for because again <laughs> for, there's so many movies sometimes you forget. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Alright. Back to the real deal. I have Trilogy of Terror 2 which is a sequel to the first Trilogy of Terror I talked to earlier with Karen Black. Karen Black is not in this film. Nope. But this is a great film. Um, he Who Kills um, is the title of the one we'll talk about with the Tiki Man returns again. It's kind of just like a continuation, really, yeah. of the first uh, film uh, with the Tiki Man story. 
but I think it's a, I actually think it's really good. It's really well done. Um, modern, 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 modernized. Get the put the I think it's really good. Uh, the killer doll is great. Um, kind of just up to his old shenanigans, like in the first film, really. But it's really good. There's also right. another. There's also another really cool story on here called Bobby. I don't know if you all have ever seen a movie called uh, Dead of Night. The '40s one is a really good one film, but there, yeah. there's there's one from the '70s called Dead of Night. Dark Sky put it out, and uh, there's a I don't know what the story is called, but on this it's called Bobby. But it's actually this actually took a lot from Dead of Night story called Bobby, where this uh, kid comes back from the dead. Basically, his mother raises him through voodoo, and he comes back, and he's just a demonic little shit and terrorizes her. It's awesome. Yeah. And there's another one called the Rat Yard, the the, the graveyard. graveyard Rats, which is really cool. Awesome film, man. Nice. I gotta find this one on DVD, but I like my VHS. <laughs> Alright. Now this one's kind of a interesting one. Interesting one. Um, Tales from the Hood. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a good... Yeah, black, motherfucker! It, it's basically a good black exploitation movie. Um, I've, I've seen this on sci-fi many, many years ago. I don't really remember much of it, but I know there's a fucking creepy ass puppet in this thing. Um, but I can't really honestly remember because I... But I do you know, know that creepy guy in the cover, I forget his name. With the afro. <laughs> he kind of looks like Don King. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, that, you know, Tales from the Hood, it's kind of, it, like I said, it, it, it was HBO. You know, you saw it on sci-fi, HBO, all that kind of yeah, stuff. it's a good one. But there is there is puppets in it. Believe me, it just I just don't remember exactly what. We're going back to 1964, way oh, back. Oh, creepy now, fucking movie with Devil Doll. Now, yes. um, this movie I think more people need to see. Oh yeah. Um, Hugo the Dummy, who basically is just kind of reincarnate reincarnation of this guy named Hugo. Mm -hmm. His soul's inside the dummy because uh, like child's play. Yeah. More or less. That's probably where Charles Play kind of got that, you know. It's from the fifties, so Makes who sense, knows, yeah. or the sixties. But um, this doctor, the great Vorelli, he's a he's a musician, one of the biggest musicians in the world, and he puts the soul of this guy named Hugo into this dummy and just makes him do his will and all his evil biddings and stuff. And eventually, uh, <laughs> make a long story short, he ca it kind of just like turns on him, you know, at the end. And it's really really cool. There's a good twist ending. Really awesome movie, Double Doll. Check it out. Real highly recommend that one. What you got, cool? All right, we're going back to Full Moon, of course, from Puppet Master to their kind of knockoff demonic toys. Um, <laughs> this was kind of, again, they wanted to basic, because you had nine movies of Puppet Master. You couldn't replicate it, per se, but uh, demonic toys was a lot of fun. I actually did like this movie. <laughs> Basically, it's... Dead babies is shit. Literally. Literally. <laughs> it's the oopsie poopsie baby or something like that, or oopsie poopsie. <laughs> and basically these people get trapped in this closet, and they get trapped with this, like, this convict, I guess, if I remember correctly. And, like, they break out and stuff, and they kind of, they end up in this warehouse where all these demonic toys are. And, uh, these toys aren't, aren't too nice. No, they're not. Um, when you get to, they had Doll Man, which came off of that. Um, Doll Man, if I, I never seen Doll Man, the oh, actual sorry. one. Um, but then they also made Doll Man versus Demonic Toys. So th this was kind of a fun little trilogy. Mm -hmm. If you like the Puppet Master movies, you like these oh, yeah. kind of evil toys. Yeah, and you'll things. dig the Charles Band type stuff. Yeah, totally it, it, it. it actually is kind of funny though, so. There's, there's other ones called like, you know, d uh, Doll Graveyards, another one. Yep. Uh, blood, the Blood Dolls, I have that, I forgot that too. Um, yeah, there's there's various yeah. others. Charles Band's really more in you know Full Moon. They're definitely specialized in that claymation type yeah. stuff, yeah. which is cool. And they're bringing that. Now, <clears throat> everyone probably knows this one. Jigsaw here. We have Saw. Yeah. Uh, the first film is a fucking masterpiece in my opinion. Danny Glover's, you know, portrayal is that cop trying to get back. Yeah. At that. Uh, that guy for well he blames him for the death that's right you know? yeah and it's just it it you don't see that ending coming either where um you know obviously the jigsaw killer mm -hmm. i mean i'm sure everyone has seen saw but 
Yeah. You know, he's, so he's in the room, okay? He's in the fucking room, <laughs> and you never expect it. And then when he finally gets up, you know, because the guy's, like, forced to, like, cut his... Mm, cut his leg through yeah, the chains and off, stuff yeah. to get his got his family. Yeah, great film, excellent. I love the first Saw. Saw two is good too. I don't mind Saw two. Saw three wasn't the worst, but then it's. Like I never saw now. Saw three. I actually own it. I never seen saw any saw other ones after that. But I love the first yeah. and the second film. They started to get real kind of trendy. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was like Hostel. Hostel was really good in the first one. Second one was all right. Third second one was. Good too. Yeah. Third one's just yeah, not the same. All right. Oh, our movie. <laughs> This is a fun movie. Another brain damage film, of course. Dead on Arrival, well, appraisal. or appraisal, appraisal. Sorry, um, it's a trilogy. It's an anthology, basically, um, where these this, one of them's guys is trying that to brain se- damage. Yeah. Okay. One, you know, one story guys trying to sell his house, um, but it can't, you know, it's got a real dark past to it. The one actually that really has the puppets per se is um, the last one. Is the third story where these creepy ass puppets, um, Freddy and the Goblins. <laughs> it, it's it's a fun movie though. Um, it's it is a brain damage film. Of course, we talk about the terrible acting. There's plenty of that. Just the way it's shot is kind of cool though. Um, not typical brain damage. So it's it's a lot of fun though. I did enjoy that one. Oh yeah. Well, we have Anthony Hopkins with hair. A very young Burgess Mil- Burgess Murdoch. In Magic. Now, this movie is so underrated, and more people should see this one. That Anthony Hopkins is an amazing actor in everything he does, but this movie, my God, he, he just plays crazy amazing. He plays this uh, mm-hmm. ventriloquist named Corky, and uh, Corky just hears voices. He, you know, this he's obsessed with this dummy. I forget what the dummy is. It's Fats. Yeah, Fats is the dummy's name. And, um... You know, he, he talks through him all the time. Like it's, like when he when he when he meets this uh, girl of his dreams again after years. You know, he met her in school and stuff. But um, this one. Right. Um. Cool. Yeah. Sometimes he likes to talk. I mean, shit. Just hang out. Scary. He likes this movie too. Magic is great. There's a scene where Burgess Murdoch's character um, <laughs> says, uh, Corky, you're not right. You need help. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and because uh, it's his agent trying to track him down. And it's just a really good scene because he tells Corky, We will forget this whole mess if you can make fat shut up for, what is it, like five minutes, I think? Yeah. And he's just like, yeah. Five minutes? I can make him shut up for five years. <laughs> Yeah. She's like, good, let's try it. And it's a great scene because it's just total builds up. Because you can totally see Anthony Hopkins, like, he, you know, his palms are sweating. He's just like, I can't wait to make this fucker talk again, you know? Yeah. And he doesn't even make five minutes. And it's it's just a great film, man. I love magic. I also had this on a big VHS. I love it. But you got to go. All right. My final one is Pinocchio's Revenge. Great movie. Um... Came out in '96. I always thought it was older than that, but it's not. Um, basically, the story is uh, what they say is you know the ultimate fairy tale of Pinocchio. Everybody knows you know he becomes a real boy and things like that. I'm a real boy. That and uh, basically, this this girl has this doll that her parents get her, and they just don't like it because. The doll slowly but surely starts to come alive and wants her to do all these mean things to people. Mm-hmm. And the parents don't believe her and they start thinking she's crazy until Pinocchio really does come alive and he starts doing these things himself, which entails to the people she doesn't like, the people, her parents, you know, that are mean to her. Because she confides in, you know, this Pinocchio doll. So she tells him all the times that her parents were mean to her, yell at her, and all that. So Pinocchio decides to take it up on himself. Nice. And say, "Hey, <laughs> fuck you! You don't fuck Pinocchio." And then she starts to realize she doesn't want her parents hurt and all her friends and family and stuff like that. So she has to try to find a way how to stop, you know, Pinocchio. But it's a very powerful doll. So it's it's, it's a lot of fun movie though. Let's um, check that one out. It's it's you know it's the '90s. It was the mid '90s. This came out when. 
I, you know, I did. I know what you did last summer, Scream, like about that same time. So this got thrown kind of under the rug. So it's a lot of fun to watch, man. I mean, it's it's a good puppet movie. Before myself, um, before myself yeah. and Ghoul uh, get down to the last film, I just want to say, Stuart Dor- Stuart Gordon has a movie called Dolls, which would definitely be worthy of this list as well. Unfortunately, me and him do not have it. It is on Blu-ray now, but it's it's harder than shit to find on DVD. So mm-hmm. I'll have to get the Blu-ray. At some we'll have to get in the Blu-ray world at some point. But it's I got I had to mention that because people are gonna be like, dude, where the fuck is Dolls? Because it's a classic, dude. Yes, I've seen the film. I love the film. I think you've seen it too. Yep. It's a classic film. It would be on this list. Just letting you know. Okay. So just so we don't seem like we yeah we missed things. Just so we don't it does you know, happen. fall through the cracks. And Damon, it's all he's gonna favorite. introduce good old May here. From Lucky McKee. Yep. <laughs> May is a masterpiece, man. Angela Great Bettis. She, her portrayal of a psycho chick oh, man. is unmatched. I <laughs> yeah. mean... It's up there. I mean, it, it is so up there. Her acting ability is just absolutely amazing. Yep. I actually just showed Ghoul this movie for the first time before we started this thing. We and he, just, it, yeah. he was floored. Um, it, it's, it was it, amazing. Film. It's, it's one of those movies where you feel bad for her, but at the same yeah. time, if you were in um, Adam's shoes, what you know? Would you really want to be around that? Right. So it it really kind of pulls you in two different directions. If totally. you know, do you feel sorry? Do you not? Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> she's, she's so sympathetic too, because yeah. all she wants to be is loved. Yeah. And who can't relate to that? You know, you want to be loved. You know, cared she, and, about. Yeah, not betrayed and like, and her only, really fr- only, her only friend is this little porcelain doll that, that her parents, that her mother her gave her, yeah. and of course when the that scene when at the school when the porcelain doll she's showing oh, breaks and all hell breaks yeah. so all these glasses blind kids. everywhere and the yeah. kid the blind kids don't know what's going on so they start crawling stepping on glass. glass and she doesn't give a oh. shit she just cares about the doll yeah. so she's grabbing up all the pieces these kids are hands and knees like in glass yeah. it's. It screwed Needless up. Needless to and, say, she got fired. And of course, this was kind of the cool part of this movie was yeah. at the end. Um, oh man! The basically, ending. her mom told her, you know, hey, if you can't get friends, make make you know, make, make a friend, Absolutely. and uh, that's exactly what she did. And they, <laughs> literally, and it was really cool for me. Frankenstein, George, style. get the fuck out of the way! I'm busy. <laughs> Now, what was really cool is because this is a kind of an homage to one of my all-time favorite films, 1982's Pieces. Um, Absolutely. So this is definitely an homage to that. Um, I really, you definitely know, definitely a modern Frankenstein. Fr- yeah, type Frankenstein film. Uh, type movie. Really cool though. Um, really depraved. Um, it, it does get. It, it does take a while. It's a slow burner. It does definitely pays off. To like when yeah. she's when she's in the. You know she's a she's a veterinarian, so she's taking care of animals, and she's you know splitting them open and stitching them Smiling together. So that yeah, so then you yeah. know like something. Made so right. then you know like something's not right because when she's when she's talking to Adam about and um, they're eating lunch and that anatomy yeah. class, and then she's like yeah the, she the lunch about, scene and they're eating lunch together, and she <laughs> she sits there and just starts talking about how this dog had yeah. cat sutures in and they exploded, <laughs> yeah. and she's smiling and he's just sitting there like. <laughs> and yeah. she eats a sandwich, but no, definitely. We could talk about this movie forever, yeah. man. May, May is, is like one of my movie. personal. It's always been yeah. one of my personal favorite modern horror films ever. Like Rue Morgue talks religiously about this movie. Fangoria does too. It's Dead. rightfully so, man. <laughs> Everyone should know May. Everyone should own May. It's a great film. Absolutely. So Ghoul, take it there away. There it is, man. guys. That is our doll slash whatever the hell it is doll puppets. Now, absolutely. We got to go to another corner and we got to talk some metal because what's better it's than that metal? It's that time for When Planets Collide! Come on, join us! The West of Planets Collide! Hey guys, welcome back to Just Setting the Horror Hell. We are back in the metal corner. Planets Collide. Planets Collide. What's going on, Episode baby? 2. We're going to talk some more bands with you. We love talking metal because obviously that goes hand in hand with The horror. blood that flows through our veins along so, with horror. Absolutely. Skid Gore here has one of the most iconic black metal albums of the 80s. Very obviously. early black metal record. Um, care to indulge us with what you have? Absolutely. This is uh, Bathory. Under the Sign of a Black Mark. This is their third record. My personal favorite. 
feel demonic feel. Corthon is a fucking black metal god. Charge the Corthon. Rest in peace. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Anyway, man, this fucking record rips. Um, I didn't hear it till uh, really later. I mean, I'm not gonna lie and say I grew up with it because obviously I'm only in my early 30s. But um, yeah, when I first heard this one, this really blew my mind. Uh, amazing. Uh, well, the thing with the black metal, I mean, this this record came out before like the Norwegian black metal started. You know, before this it was Venom, you know, Bathory, Merciful Fate, Hellhammer, Celtic Frost, shit like that. You know, Sarcophago down there as well. Um, they were very influenced, even Necrophagia, very much influenced on the Norwegian black metal sound. But uh, personally, if you look at the archives of extreme black metal and whatnot, you will see Venom at the top of the fucking list. It's yeah. rightfully so, Jack. Because Corthon's fucking vocals... <laughs> I mean, Venom was there. Absolutely, we'll Kronos too. But yeah, with Corthon and uh, Bathory... Just that whole demonic feel. Because when, I mean, there's a good debate there. Because Kronos was more of a barking, kind of like Lemmy, like demonic style. But yeah. Orthon Flat had like that, yeah, you know, that we all love. The screams. The, the, what, we, what, we, what we categorize black metal actually as. Um, a lot of people, when you say black metal, you know, that's why people don't consider Venom black metal. The only reason Venom was considered black metal is because of the album black metal. Um, you know, the the sense the second wave of Norwegian black metal was Absolutely. was the reason why black metal is considered with the shrieking vocals and all that stuff. Yep. And Bathory was definitely got course on the side for that. Swedish black metal. And the way that he played, yeah, they were from Sweden. And the way that he played his guitar, you know, the, the type of tone he had definitely rubbed off on your animus as well yep. for Mayhem. Oh yeah. I mean, dude, what more can you say, man? This is a, this is essential if you're into, you know, if you're into the harder. Extreme demonic black extreme black metal the 80s, style, more or less in the 80s. And yeah, you're into, you know. and you're curious, like you pick up a Mayhem record or a Cradle of Filth record or whatever, tickles your phony bone. You want to fucking do your homework and find out more about where these uh, great bands that we love, you know, came from. Definitely, you'll see Venom, Bathory, Merciful Fate, Celtic Frost, Tellhammer, Sarcophago, Necrophagia. The list goes on. Slaughter from Canada as well is another one. Yep. But yeah, that's my pick, Bath 3, Undersigned Black Mark. Ghoul, what you got? Alright, I'm gonna do a little collection here. It's gonna be a little harder to see, but I'm talking about Doom Metal from the early 80s, and we're not talking Black Sabbath. We're talking Witchfinder General. It's a great movie with Vincent Price, <laughs> but it is also one of my absolute favorite bands. Absolutely. Um, another UK band, another product of the late 70s, early 80s. Um, Sabbath worship, absolutely. Witchfinder General, man. I mean, the riffs are cool. His voice is iconic. Yes, everybody tends to rip off, you know, Sabbathy type, early 70s, you know, 70s, 80s type of doom metal. Even I mean, Pentagram in trouble. Yes. Um, their first album, obviously, was uh, Death Penalty. Yep. Which. My personal you know, favorite. Yeah. Now, this had a very voluptuous lead. <laughs> With tits hanging on, I cannot remember. You gotta tell them the story about that cover, man, because that's one of the great stories of heavy metal. I mean, that cover was so, so oh, bad. I mean, look at the dude; she's fucking naked. Yeah, with her tits <laughs> hanging out. I mean, this was that came out in the, in the time where it's like eighty-two. Wow, that would never was even heard of. And uh, <laughs> you know, death penalty came out. No, they did. They were very doom metal in the in the respect that they sang about drugs and mushroom tea and mushroom tea. <laughs> Let's take some LSD. <laughs> you know, and they were such a this such a cool band. Now they did take a hiatus from I think it was like '83 or '84, and just pretty much disappeared. Now nobody really knows what happened to them. And they put out an album in 2008, I believe, called Resurrected. Um, you know, they got older. They got, you know, they aged, and uh, still good. Though. But man. Resurrected was is a really actually pretty good album. It's got a lot of doom aspects, but you know if you're expecting if you're a Witchfinder General fan, you, you want to hear the. 
say, but you don't get that. You get more of a lower tone. More of a baritone from yeah. uh, the singer. I've, his yeah. name escapes me, but he's great. Um, but no, Witchfinder General had, you know, they put out Death Penalty, Friends of Hell was their second album. Excellent. Same exact, um, yep, same, same same exact cover with none, or, uh, witches being basically taken out of a thing and slaughtered. Classic. Right? Um, then they had uh, their Live in 83, which was a live album, obviously. Um, they do have uh, some Soviet album they put out in like 81 or 82, very hard to get. Um, and yeah, they got, you know, Resurrected, it came out in 2008, Witchfinder General, definitely a great movie, but also a very awesome, awesome band if you like some cool riffage, so. And that was an awesome section because we tapped on some black metal with Bathory, and we tapped doom on some metal. great doom metal with Witchfinder and General. And of course, right down front here, if you want some more. <laughs> You got Sarcophago down over here, INRI. You got Alice Cooper right here, of course, the king of shock rock. Sabotage, one of the top. I mean, aside from Paranoid, this has got to be one of my favorite albums. That's a reality for me, man, but I yeah. love every Sabbath record. Can't, it's a fine <laughs> line. And then, of course, Mayhem. And welcome to Tiger. the Sentinel Horror Hell. Welcome to planets collide. Now let's get back to those other idiots. <laughs> Cheers guys. Cheers. Listen to metal. Hail Satan. Metal forever. Say hi to Damien guys. We had a blast doing this episode of course. Lay off. Lay off. <laughs> we had a blast doing this episode guys. The dolls. Um, things that are possessed. Some um, metal for you. Definitely had some metal. Um, you know, man, we love doing these episodes. We're going to be bringing you back some more really cool shit, so definitely stay tuned. The lists are endless for movies, so... But, with that mean. being said, I am Ghoul. I'm Skit Gore, and we'll see you next time, man. Let it rip. Horror forever. Metal forever. Keep it real. We'll see you next time on... Descent into Horror! Yeah! <laughs>